and welcome to this week's vlog which is all about the end of men um it's wednesday normally i would be saying i haven't read until tonight i read like 40 percent of this book yesterday <laughs> and just didn't vlog um so yeah if you don't know what the end of men is basically you are following different women and a man it turns out um during a pandemic around the world where there is a virus killing off men and you follow them from day one right the way through um i think i'm currently on recovery it's split into sections so like the start and end. i can't remember the titles i got to recovery last night so obviously they have as the title suggests spoiler alert found a possible cure or vaccine so yeah i'm enjoying it the author has a letter in front of this book saying she has had this book written since 2018 i believe her you can't write a book in 2020 and get it published in 2021 unless you pull a hell of a lot of strings it's a good book it's a strong four nearly five star book um yeah i i read the 40 percent last night no reading sprints literally just started at nine finished at ten <laughs> which is good for me yeah it's a quick read as well that 40 percent was something like 140 something pages so not to be scoffed at um aiming to finish it tomorrow not tonight so this vlog will be short because this is the only book i'm reading so yeah i will come to you when i have most likely finished so much for me not finishing the end of men tonight <laughs> um, it's nine o'clock i've just finished this book four stars um i'm gonna be honest the ending chapters kind of did let this book down um our doctor friend in canada can go do one um i understand the understanding for that but she's still a bit of a see you next and you can finish that um our writer in London, I get her pain, I do. The way she treated a certain friend after a few years, no. Um, and then what else? Oh, um, our lovely Scottish doctor, um, I kind of don't agree with what she did to that other doctor, um, but yeah, apart from that, a really good book, um, I love the fact that you saw different POVs during this plague, let's call it, um, yes, there were majority women with a couple of men, chapters sprinkled in there it would have been nice to read a couple of chapters from a man's point of view who was immune to this disease just to read how he was feeling like while well, people he knew died and how he was dealing with the fact that he'd lived and then maybe a chapter a couple or a couple of chapters from a child growing up in the years because this goes over a lot of years and the last chapter is uh so the last chapter is in September 2032 and the plague starts in 2025 so it's been seven years if you had a child who was like nine or ten you could have a chapter every year where them explain how their life has changed Maybe a female child, child to see how her schooling changed, how her family dynamic changed, things like that. That would be nice, but yeah, I really enjoy this. Um, it is Christina's debut book, a really strong debut in my opinion. Um, I have seen the Goodreads um, comments of people griping all the medical stuff. Some of it I get, but I'm being honest, you can't take this book realistically because you don't know if this would actually happen in real life. It's an option that could happen if something like this did happen um, and it actually says in Christina's author thing at the end that TV rights have been sold to a major US studio 
I would love to see this as a TV show just to see how they would film certain elements because there are some parts of this book especially what's happening in other parts of the world where I'm like would you actually be allowed to show that on TV um which would be interesting um but yeah book seven of I like say January March done that was for the prompt a book which has dedication to mum um yeah there's two days left of March I'm not going to pick another prompt and read that book because I will not get it finished in two days sorry for the cuts I'm yawning ridiculously so I need to yeah wrap this day up um I was thinking of picking a sequel from my little pile of Ooh, there, there, there is. Um, but that pile right there is my April TBR. And as you can see, them two books there are a little bit chunky. Um, The Dragon's Promise, that one there, is a sequel. Um, and my rule has always been, if I don't read more than 50% of a book before the start of the month where it, of the TBR is on, I still class that as that month's TV at that month's bread book if that makes sense um so I'm thinking I'm gonna start the dragon's pearl I said dragon's promise it's dragon's pearl and just work out what 50% is well 47% and read that part or as near as I can get without being 50% some people that are cheating to me that is just good I've got, I think it's about 606 pages, I want to say, something like that. So, reading like, let's say, 260 pages, just to be safe. Probably not going to be done in one night. So I can still do it. If I somehow get to that 260 page mark tomorrow night, I'll be very shocked. I will start the final strife. Because that's my other big book. But I don't imagine that that well. I don't envision myself doing that. And I'm wanting to kind of save a big book for um, a potential 24 hour reading vlog next week. Don't hold me to that. I said that all the time last year. It never happened. Um, but I have next week off work. Um, once I finish on Friday, I have like nine. No. Because the bank holiday and I we get extra. Let me explain. Because of the Easter holidays, we also get Good Friday bank and Easter Monday off. My work, I work in education. My work gives us a Thursday and Tuesday off as well, so that's six days. So I've took three days off for of my annual leave to have the first full week off of Easter. Um, but I'm not back till the Wednesday after. So that's like ten. 11 days off work so I think a 24 hour reading vlog should be doable but let's see what happens um yeah I'm gonna stop writing on and go to bed because these yawns are knocking me out so I will update you tomorrow with what I decide to do with the dragon's pearl or if I just decide to start any other book but I probably won't because I don't want to read a quick book too soon before April Hello, it's Friday the 31st of March. Um, I'm just about to start Dragon's Promise, the sequel to Six Crimson Cranes. Um, I did a really shoddy, and I mean shoddy, um, synopsis for Six Crimson Cranes. So I'm going to read it to you in this one because I feel like I need to, I won't say repent, but it's the wrong words. Yes, I have on my iPad. Um, so here it goes. Shari, the only princess of Kiata, has a secret. Forbidden magic runs through her veins. Normally she conceals it well, but on the morning of her betrothal ceremony, she loses control. At first, her mistake seems like a stroke of luck for, st for stalling the wedding she never wanted. But it also catches the attention of her Raikama, her stepmother, who also has dark magic of her own. Shari's um, stepmother then um, banishes her and turns her six brothers into cranes and says every time that Shari kind of mutters a word, her brothers will die. 
and Charlotte goes on this adventure um, to find a way to cure her brothers and to get back her stepmother along the way meets a dragon um, and the dragon is connected it gets to the ending and then we lead on to our sequel um, yeah sp slight let's just say spoiler now because I am reading this book. Um, in the first book, Shari made a promise to the dragon to return the dragon's pearl rightfully back to them. Um, but it's a dangerous journey to the kingdom of dragons, navigating political intrigue and fends off these who covet, covet the pearl for themselves, um, but still concealing her own dark magic. And... Um, It, yeah, it threatens to destroy her family and sever the thread of fate that binds her to her true love. I can't remember who the, the true love is. I have a feeling we were told. I can't remember, um, but I am really looking forward to reading this one. Um, I said earlier that I think this is like 600 pages because I thought it was so big. It's 482. I had an extra 100 pages on. Um, so my whole thing of not reading more than 240 pages before the end of March definitely needs to happen. However, I don't think I'm going to read 240 pages in the night. I said to myself when I picked this book up. The writing's pretty big. Um, so, yeah. 240 is a lot of pages, so I'm not going to lie. Um, I think if this writing was like one size smaller, you could cut off like at least 40 pages. Um, 240 pages, like I said, is a lot. Um, it's 24 chapters, which is a lot. But then this is also me. Um, so let's see. If I do read more than 50% tonight, um, just FYI after myself. I'm not going to put 240, like, over 240 in my Goodreads update. So if you follow me on there, if you don't, links down below. Um, I update once a month at the moment with reviews. Um, better at that than Instagram, which I haven't updated reviews for the whole year. Definitely needs to be a job next week and I've got my week off. Um, so yeah, really looking forward to this sequel. It is YA, however, it's one of those YA books where... While it does read YA, it reads an enjoyable YA, not a stereotypical girl falls in love with two guys and there's a love triangle that it shouldn't be a love triangle. And she has powers that she didn't know she has, but no, she knows she has powers. Um, another cliche YA, let's say. Um, so yeah, I'm going to stop rambling and go start reading. Um, yeah. I'll probably end this vlog when I come back and update you just because I can then start a new fresh April vlog for next week well tomorrow hello it's quarter to nine um I've just read 120 pages of the dragon's promise 24% of the way through um I'm, I'm I'm not I'm not sure how how much I'm going to enjoy this um I think I gave six dreams and the trains five stars or it was a strong four um in 120 pages there has been four twists um a couple of backstabs and people going back on words and i'm just i, I literally, literally got to the 120 page mark and was like that was a bit too much of a roller coaster if that carries on for the weight, rest of the book i'm gonna be so confused um yeah so it's a I want to say I hate writing books this early in, book, in the book, but I really don't. It's a strong three and a half of them stars at the moment, um, but I'm going to bed because I've just sent Ada like a three minute voice note and yawned about 60 times. So I'm going to go to bed. Um, I was going to end this vlog here and then like start a new one for April, but no, because I may as well just carry on. I mean, I can do a goodbye February, February, goodbye March, hello April title. Cliche. Um, so yeah. I'm at a city match tomorrow and um, we got some tickets for your work and 
tomorrow even with some colleagues and that means I'm still reading all day. So yeah, um, but I will update you tomorrow evening with where I get or if I finish. Hello, Sunday, um, lunchtime. Due to my body being my body, I couldn't go to D and D. Um, so I have been cracking on with the Dragon's Promise. Um, I'm now seventy six percent of the way through. I'm liking it. There's the the there's some. It's a strong fall. There is something, and I don't know what holds me back from giving it a five star at the moment. Um, but I am in the final quarter. It is you know the big final i'll say battle but we know it's not gonna be battle scenes are coming i'm enjoying the character development i'm enjoying seeing shara and Takan, um their relationship flourish and grow and um, that was the person i couldn't remember his name from before um there's a couple of characters that well one character has been introduced it's no longer in the story where i'm a bit like mm, they should be as far as i know but let's see if they're actually needed in the final because you know i have a suspicion they may have come back and aid but let's see um i'm loving the development of the stepmother story and find out more about her background um so yeah it's going okay it definitely should have been finished today and then i can start I don't know if I'm going to start the final strife or if I'll start one of them just because I can probably finish them today but let's see um, how my reading goes and my body functions I will say. Really random I know but yeah I'll update you when I've finished The Dragon's Promise. It's been an hour since I last updated you. Finished The Dragon's Promise. <laughs> Um, four stars. Not a strong four star though, because that ending felt disappointing to me. Um, the whole final battle. Nah. And then the ending after that didn't. Yeah. And the character that I want to come back didn't come back. So yeah. A little bit disappointing, but I've got to say... Elizabeth Lim is a fantastic storyteller, a fantastic writer. This just disappointed me. I still want to read her other works, but looking on Goodreads, a lot of people felt this wasn't necessary. And as much as I enjoy it, I do agree. Six, eight, eight, six Queen of was such a good book. Such a good book this didn't live up to that um and i get this story was there to be told but it didn't live up to the expectations on the hype that came from the book before but oh well um book 20 of the year done at the start of month four so a third of the way through my goal um i have two choices now for my next route um, well I say two choices I know which books I'm going to read next um, and yes I say books because it's five past one so I have time to potentially read two books today especially when we're not working tomorrow I don't have to go to bed early ish <laughs> um, so book number one will be The Silence of the Girls by Pat Barker I won't say Baker then um, but this is about Bryce's, um, the bed of Achilles and it's her story, I believe just going up, well it's a reimagining of the Iliad, um, but it said the last thing is Bryce's have a very different tale to tell so I'm guessing it's that. Um, this is my first book by Pat Barker. I know Sophie's read this book and I, she really enjoyed it. I can't remember what she gave, what she gave, gave it off the top of my head, but I know she really liked it. She just read The Woman of Troy, I think it is, by Pat Barker. I think they're part of the same series. Um, so yes, this will be book two. Um, this is 324 pages long. 
so potentially I could have this read by six. And then the third book I want to start today, well, the second book I want to start today, so not the third, third book I'm hoping to finish today, um, is A Lesson in Vengeance by Victoria Lee. Um, Felicity goes back to her old school where her girlfriend has passed away. Her old room is part of this dormitory, which is supposed to be haunted by five ghosts of previous students who are apparently witches. And the witchcraft is woven into this school's past called Dollarways, by the, by, by the way, by the answer, by the way. Um, and then a new girl comes in and won't let Felicity forget about her history with the place and the occult. And she's drawn back into it because she helps this new girl called Ellis with her book. Yeah. Um, this one is... 376 pages. So if I can finish both these, that's like 700 pages read today. Um, but my aim is to finish this by six and then finish this by 11, I'll say. And um, hopefully it will be a quick read. Well, quickish read. Although this is me, I say quickish. How much quicker do I need to be in my reading, let's be honest. Um, so yeah, I will update you when I am somewhere through The Silence of the Girls. Still Sunday, five past five. Finish the science of the girls. Um, five stars. I love this storytelling, and it's the fact that you see the war, the what Trojan War, from the eyes of the women. Don't get me wrong. There is gore. There is mentions of Howard. There is mentions of SA. But it's a brutally honest look at what it would have been like to be a woman especially a slave woman back in the days when the Trojan War happened. Um, but no, it was interesting seeing it from the woman's point of view of like how they just kind of dealt with it and went about their days with all these emotions. And um, it's kind of hard to say what I liked in a lot of detail because it's just the same it's the storytelling it's the writing it's the characters it's a story from a woman's point of view instead of a man's maybe not as hard as I thought it would be um so yeah book 21 of the year done um I've just checked Goodreads I am six books ahead of target like where I should be now to finish to complete my 60 book goal um so I will start A Lesson in Vengeance tonight, but the aim is to not finish it tonight like I thought I would. Um, I have next week off work to read as well and tomorrow all my plan is to wash, wash do some washing, do some iron, not gonna lie, that's it. So I will let you know when I start A Lesson in Vengeance, but it won't be very soon, probably about seven ish, I'll say. Sunday evening, just gone to bed. 24% of the way through a lesson in vengeance. It's alright. It, I have no real thought, thoughts yet, which is strange for me. Um, I'm enjoying it, so I'm going to continue reading, but yeah normally by this point I'm like I have thoughts on what is Sunday evening at all no um yeah normally I have thoughts on characters I don't um I'm which just like okay it feels like I'm still trying to get to know the characters which understandably but I should have some thoughts like initial thoughts if that makes sense but We'll probably finish tomorrow but yeah i did this vlog um yeah strong finish to march cracking start to april let's hope it continues but until the next video bye